I want to go into research designs and give you a more concrete idea how a research design can minimize threats to internal validity. But before I can do that, you have to become familiar with the terms construct, variable, constant, and independent and dependent variable. A hypothesis describes or explains a relationship between constructs. The term construct is used to indicate that we're talking about a property in general, abstract terms. For example, I could hypothesize that loneliness and depression are associated. The terms loneliness and depression are the constructs here. Of course, loneliness and depression can be expressed in many different ways. The term variable refers to an operationalized version of a construct. A variable is a specific, concrete expression of the construct and is measurable or manipulable. For example, I could operationalize loneliness in a group of elderly people in a nursing home, for example, by using a self-report questionnaire. I could administer the UCLA Loneliness Scale. This scale is a 20-item questionnaire consisting of items like, I have nobody to talk to. The variable loneliness now refers to loneliness as expressed through scores on the UCLA scale. If I hypothesize that loneliness causes depression, I would be better off manipulating instead of measuring loneliness. I could give one group of elderly people a cat to take care of, comparing them with a control group without a cat. I've now operationalized loneliness by creating two levels of loneliness. The variable loneliness now refers to high or low loneliness expressed through the presence or absence of a feline companion. Finally, I could operationalize depression by using the Geriatric Depression Scale, the GDS, consisting of 15 questions such as, do you feel happy most of the time? The variable depression now refers to depression as expressed through the scores on the GDS. Okay, so variables are measured or manipulated properties that take on different values. This last bit is important. A variable's values need to vary Otherwise, the property isn't very interesting. It's a constant. Suppose the nursing home is so horrible that all residents get the maximum depression score. Well, then we cannot show a relation between loneliness and depression, at least not in this group of subjects. Both lonely and less lonely people will be equally depressed. Depression is a constant. So the variables central to our hypothesis should be variable. They should show variation. Of course, it is a good idea to keep other extraneous variables constant so that they cannot provide alternative explanations. But we'll get to that in another video. Okay, now that I've defined what a variable is, let's look at different types of variables according to the role they play in describing or explaining a phenomenon. I'll refer to the variables that are central to our hypothesis as variables of interest. When a cause and effect can't be identified, or when a causal direction isn't obvious or even of interest, our variables are on equal footing. And then we just refer to them as variables. But when our hypothesis is causal, we can identify a cause and an effect. And we then refer to the cause variable as the independent variable, and to the effect variable as the dependent variable. The independent variable is also referred to as cause variable, explanatory variable, input variable, or predictor. It refers to a variable that is hypothesized to cause or predict another variable. In our example, loneliness was hypothesized to cause depression. The independent variable here, of course, is loneliness. And it's operationalized through the presence or the absence of a cat. Now, the dependent variable is hypothesized to be influenced by the cause variable or to be the result of another variable. Its values depend on another variable. In our example, the dependent variable was depression, as measured through scores on the GDS questionnaire. The dependent variable is also referred to as effect variable, response variable, outcome or output variable. Now, if you're having trouble telling the terms independent and dependent apart, Try to remember that the independent variable is what the researcher would like to be in control of. It's the cause that comes first. 